everyone, and welcome to Publish Me, Punish Me, a comedy series that's examining deal practices within the games industry with me, Ava Carr, founder and CEO at Glitch. And me, Son M, the studio director of Perfect Garbage. Each episode, we'll be diving into publishers, crowdfunding, equity deals, and more. So whether it's the good, the bad, or just plain yikes, we're going to talk about it all. If you're interested in discussions about the design and business of video games, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel below. So, wave a car. <laughs> what are we talking about today? So, Sunem, uh, we're talking about prototype funding today. Prototype funding. We're finally getting on the prototype funding conversation because everyone's been talking about it, asking about it. There's definitely been a spike in interest for prototypes and what does it mean to fund them? And why mm-hmm. do they need to exist? The answer is a lot of reasons. Maybe we can jump into and and move into also like what the difference is between maybe like a a prototype fund and also say like a publishing deal. So prototyping deals are usually with the idea of they're giving you some form of uh, financial backing to create a build or the initial example or concept of what the game is that you're making versus a publishing deal is looking, usually you have to have that build by the time you go to a publishing deal, is looking to either pave the way and fund or distribute what the finished product is. So prototype funds tend to be a lot smaller than publishing deals because you're working on just building a, a, a conceptual framework. Uh, they tend to also be more invested in helping you develop the tools needed for the bigger game. Or I've heard the opposite where they're more invested in developing the aesthetic and the vibe and how you want the bigger game to feel. Whatever it is, is you're building something that can showcase what you want your full game to be imagined to be um, and proving that you can do it. Yeah. And I would say too that uh, I I would add the stages, right? So Mm -hmm. if you're talking about a prototype fund, it's really before there is anything on the table all the way leading up to a prototype. And I've seen publishing really pick up anywhere post prototype and all the way out to launch, right? So whether you're at an alpha or you're at your early beta, like that's oftentimes where I start to see people look for publishing and or publishing deals. That's kind of like the path, right? right? Before you get out to distribution. And maybe we could start off by just talking about like, what are the options right now that are out there for prototype funding? Clearly we know there's the Moonrise Fund, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a little bit, uh, and the Galaxy Fund, which you've also worked to create. And so those are the ones that default to me. I I would say there's like a couple of categories of prototype funds, right? Mm -hmm. Like there's publishing prototype funds, and then there's equity prototype funds, and then there's also like grant prototype funds. And they weren't like, they all kind of serve very similar purposes, right? So if you can find someone that will fund your game basically from an idea, that is what I would consider a prototype fund, which is freaking awesome, right? Like if you simply have an idea or you have a couple of, you know, I don't know, scratches on a napkin or whatnot, and people believe in you enough, you can get funding for your game. And that's like a really, that's a really big deal. Prototype funds are really, really important just so that projects can get started or people can just simply get started on the thing that they want to do. Well, I think of the negative, right? Immediately. (laughs) I think prototype funding is exceptionally amazing and I'm really happy that it's starting to grow more and more into like the uh, indie game ecosystem. I think having these opportunities are super, super important, but I'm going to be frank, not until recently was prototype funding even accessible if you're new. Um, A lot of prototype funding, like Ava mentioned, is taking a scrapbook idea, a napkin idea, you know, and going to basically a form of investing, right? People are investing in you when they give you a prototype fund, whether it is a grant or a funding deal is the goal of they believe that you can achieve this vision. And if you're new to the industry, the risk of giving someone money who they don't have a backlog of networking or a backlog of uh, AAA history or indie history is so reluctantly given like that level of trust. And so I I would argue like not until in the last two to three years with the growth of prototype funding and the appreciation for prototype funding, was it even an accessible concept to folks who are new? I mean, it's the reason I turned to crowdfunding. I remember that distinctly. So it's exciting, but it's new. Like this wave of support and being more, I guess, willing to take risks that like some funds, are, or even the fact that there's now smaller funds more willing to help get started, I think is a newer mm-hmm. and exciting thing. But it wasn't always like this. 
it wasn't common up until again two or three years ago i can probably give you the exact date of when it got started um typically somewhere around june of 2020 just let me tell you all right like there were very few people at that time that were in my network when I was getting started that were going to be able to give me an early stage equity check that I vibed with. It Let's just be frank, like most of the people who have funding, most of the people who have the power to be able to write, you know, like a couple hundred thousand dollar check were just either A, not in my network or B, I, I just simply didn't vibe with them. And that's a hundred percent okay. So um, I'd say that, you know, they're uncommon. They are becoming more common these days. And I also feel like, especially with the indie game scene, or at least with the game dev scene, it's becoming more acceptable to even take, for example, like equity financing. Um, and people are more open to the idea at this stage. So the concept of a prototype fund is really someone or an organization or an entity that believes in the team and that the team will be able to deliver with, with or without even, you know, know, a, a massive, interesting project that is right in front of you. Something that you mentioned that I really want to highlight is the believing in you aspect. And so something that I really, really think is important to know is that prototype funding is a form of selling yourself, just like pitching is. And if you don't have history in making games, if this is your first project or even your second, you have to make sure that when you are reaching out for prototype funding, that you are like you have to do your best to sell that you want to make this game and that you have the capabilities of making this game or can hire the capabilities of helping you make this game. And I think that's so, so crucial to learn right away than to expect. You want to make like a pitch deck when you're talking about proto fight funding. You want to be able to show that you understand the execution of ideas when you want to talk to have prototype funding. You want to have people in your corner you can ask for help that you can showcase that you're getting the advice that you need and things like that it's like um prototype funding is so much more than just pitching your concept to make the build to later on pitch to something else it's proving that you even have the ability to do that first step making that build and i think that is something that is difficult if you don't take the time to learn what you want to do genuinely I'm just saying, if you think publishers can sniff out uh, weaker game concepts, wait till, you, wait till they try to sniff out you attempting an idea that you have. Unless, like I said, you have like, of course, you've been in the industry for a long time. You've got tons of networking, blah, blah, blah. You know who you yeah. are. Um, or you've been a creative director at multiple, multiple companies beforehand and people mm -hmm. are reaching out directly to you, right? Like there's there's so many different ways in which folks either A, get tapped or can reach out to be funded via prototype funding, mm -hmm. especially on the equity side or even on the publishing side. And one thing that I also would add to that is when you are approaching someone who is looking <clears throat> to fund uh, a, a prototype, I would say traction is probably one of the biggest things that you can also share and uh, also showcase whether it's traction with your your community. You know, Sun, I often say this, that I, I think that the world of you, right, on, on this end where you definitely know who, like who you are, what you wanna create, and then also what you're delivering to the people who are following you. And it's very clear, like I could say cyberpunk, diesel punk, I could say, I oh, could God. say neon colors, right? Like I, I could literally say, uh, no, I'm Killing. not going to go there. No, I was going to go there, but I didn't. I help myself. Right. Um, so, right, like uh, those are the things that when you start to really understand a person and also when you understand a team and what they want to achieve, that's when you really start to understand, like, can you find that prototype funding? And then how successful will you be in, in getting that prototype funding? Yeah. And I think like what I wanted to kind of wrap that up with is that you can't just get, especially if you're from a marginalized community, because we really are having an upwards battle sometimes and you know it, you have to come at a hundred percent to get prototype funding. And it's the unfortunate truth. And I wish, and I'm hoping for the future in which prototype funding is significantly more accessible. It's like growing and growing. Point is, as marginalized creators, we have to come at things with 110%. And that's the unfortunate truth. And that's something I struggle with. That's something you've definitely talked about in your own experiences. 
in the past season of uh, PMPM PM and how we've had to come at things. And so if you're looking for prototype funding and you're, it's your first time making games, ask for help, talk to other devs, get as much information as you can to help visualize and conceptualize the thing that you want to make. So that way you do reach out to a prototype fund. You are ready to go <laughs> and you can explain what you need and why you need it. I just wish yeah. there was more options is all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. The old time. Yeah, we each have a deal. It's time. Who wants to go first? Are you going first? I will you go should go first. first. So is your is yours happy? Yeah, it's mine. I certainly better for you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, my deal sucks. Uh I got the Moonrise Fund and it's been <laughs> hell since oh my god uh so um actually yeah i i do want to talk about it so i'm going to not be fully anonymous i know that perfect garbage uh it was announced that we were part of the moonrise fund we're really really excited but i am going to keep quiet about the exact numbers i don't get the luxury of being like secret studio it's my studio <laughs> to give everyone kind of the backstory Perfect Garbage was founded via a kickstarting campaign we did for our first game, Love Shore. Um, Ava knows we met a, a couple years back when I was looking for publishing to finish the game. So I had done the thing I warned everyone not to do for crowd in the crowdfunding episode, which is I funded the game to build the prototype in Kickstarter. And the reason why that's a no-no is because it's really hard after you do a Kickstarter to get more funds for that game because it tends to act as sometimes a cap. Uh, of like, okay, this is the audience for that game. That's it. Depending on who you talk to. Yeah, sorry. Most of the people you talk to, I'm going I'm to tell you this now. They might not tell you this, but I'll tell you this right now, okay? Most of the people don't like the Kickstarter. Just save it for the end. Anyway, we've spent a long time on Love Shore. Uh, we're coming into our third year of development. Mm -hmm. We're launching this year, 2022. Um, but we knew that we didn't want to put more money into Love Shore. We've gotten as close to finishing as we can get it with the funds that we had from the Kickstarter and our own financial backing. So we were going to launch it. And that's like the end of that. But because of that, we are in this limbo stage where we want to be able to afford working in the studio and start working on our next game, but had no passive income because Love Shore hadn't launched yet. And this was like prime time for us to apply to a prototype fund. We knew that we would have income soon from a project coming out. We don't know how much, but we also knew that we needed to be working on something in the meantime as this project gets to launch. Um, so we applied for the Moonrise Fund. Everything was dandy. We got a deal. The way our deal looks like is we received funding from the Moonrise Fund for a certain amount of equity in our company. So Perfect Garbage has shared some of the equity with um, the Moonrise Fund. And what that also means, and we've talked about it in our equity deal is that once we're able to uh, release like even Love Shore, our games, when the studio itself makes an income and has revenue, um, that's when we share in the equity, uh, which is pretty exciting because we get to pay ourselves, we get to fund ourselves, um, we have salaries and we're not immediately <laughs> shot in the foot <laughs> about it. And I think about that a lot. Doing this deal worked really, really well for my studio, which was basically getting by until its next game launch. Um, so with the Moonrise Fund, we were able to start prototyping our next game. And I've been pitching it. I've talked about it on social media. We're really, really in an exciting stage where we're working on a new project, able to fund this new project and have a proof of concept to show platforms and publishers now to fund the rest of the game, which is, again, pretty exciting. And what's even cooler about working with the, I know it sounds like I'm selling it because I'm currently <laughs> in it. What's great about doing the equity deal is that when we meet with a publisher, it doesn't impact the publishing deal, which works on a project by project basis, not a studio basis. Another cool thing. So if you are looking to get a prototype fund and they are asking for equity, make sure they're asking for equity. I mean, you have to decide what you want, but make sure you know what they're asking equity from. Like, do they want a revenue return from the project that you're making or they want it from the studio, which is another big important thing. So ultimately we're in a good place. Watch your back, Ava. I will talk about it if we're not. <laughs> <laughs> And we're doing okay. Since then, I've seen more deals appear like this, which is pretty exciting. And I hope that more people have an opportunity to go through something like this, because I think it's um, a little bit safer than what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I was terrified. I feel like since it is this show, we have to say punish me or publish me. Oh yeah. So punish me for sure. Um, because there's a few things that I don't like. Uh, I want uh, more money for less equity. <laughs> Keep that in mind. More money, less equity. 
I'm teasing. Uh, this definitely was a published name. So far, so good. Well, hold up. I do need to go and ask you though. So what was it that was, for example, like terrifying? Equity. And I, I know we're going to talk about it in the future, but equity is a really, really scary thing to take as a company because you are basically giving some up, some of your company up a certain percentage to a third party. Um, and that third party, based on the specifics of the deal, right? Everything is different depending on the deal, can have sway or can have some control or will get to have uh, revenue whenever you pull a dividend, things like that. And so it becomes less about like, this is our studio, this is what we're making and becomes, this is our studio and something else. And that's always terrifying, no matter how good of a relationship you have with someone, no matter how much you want to work with another team, it's, it's your, you know, it's your baby that you're kind of putting up to the chop and block a little bit and removing some of its limbs. That's what's scary. It's, it's equity deals are scary. And I highly recommend everyone, if you ever take an equity deal to do a lot of reading and spend a lot of time with it, no matter how much I am excited they exist, always read it. Um, it's just a different, um, it's a different playing game. I don't know what I was trying. Ball playing ball it's game. a different beast. It's a different, yeah. It's playing it's field different. or ball game. <laughs> <laughs> it's playing field, ball game. You know what it is. Uh, it's different. Anyway, what's your mm -hmm. deal? I have it on my phone. Okay, story time. They said, I started a studio with my friends informally. We were not a company or anything, but we started working on a project together and it's been about six months. Oh, good for them. So That's the best feeling. Okay, so after we saw the Galaxy Fund grants, thank you, Ava, we scoured the internet for more funding and applied for a prototype fund for $15,000 and got a call from the organizers. They liked our team, but asked if we could switch our project project to something that was more mobile friendly or had mobile like features. It was weird and a strange request for an organization that's doing PC plus console first for their game. Interesting. Uh, they still offered us the funding after we said no and things got weird uh, once they shared some papers. They wanted publishing rights on mobile and they also asked for some veto powers over how we could distribute our game in the future. Here we were asking for what we thought was a grant and instead being offered a mobile deal for our PC plus console game. So publish or punish? Um, punish. Wow. There's a lot of red flags. Boop, 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 boop. Put some red flags there because there's a lot of them. This deal, one, is sneaky. They said, yeah, you don't have to worry. We won't let you do, you don't have to move to mobile, but then intentionally structure the contract in which they can demand mobile later. Or at least if they do do mobile or something, maybe, I don't know the no, very specific details. Like, I, was say, I don't know if very, it's a demand. If they have veto power in the, if the way it was worded, if they have veto power in how the game is distributed, that mm -hmm. tells me there's control over how it's being published. Yes. Yes. Like that's so they I'm have right. some sort of veto power over the distribution. And again, I don't know what the details are on that veto, but it is curious. Mm, indubitably. Mm, uh, very curious. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of it. I'm also for 15K, right? One five? 15K, one five. Yeah, garbage. Uh <laughs> That's a garbage Take your 15k. I'm just kidding. No. Literally 15k. No, yeah. I, I pop, this is punishing all over the place. Tell me they didn't take it. So they uh <laughs> I forgot that this is what they said. Oh my god. It was so brief, everybody. We said no and haven't looked back since that. And f that. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Good for them. The correct yeah. decision. Congratulations. <laughs> It was a punishing deal, but they survived. I have a question mm -hmm. because as we've seen with other deals and we learned in season one, um, sometimes deals are money and sometimes they are more than money. Do prototype deals ever come with more than money? Do they ever come with other sorts of help? So I love that Alana, our editor and producer came up with the question that we need to answer. Like, of course there's a check, but is there anything that comes beyond the, the funding and the capital? Uh, Son, do you want to take that? Yeah, uh, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. It depends. It really does depend on the deal because it's also it depends on what the deal's asking for in return. So like the one that you just mentioned, Ava, was asking for things that I wouldn't usually associate with a prototype fund because it's just a little bit of money in the beginning. Whack. For 15K, uh, you can ask for that with if there's like 
lots of zeros behind those numbers. Yeah, but- for 150, some deals offer additional assistance. So I could tell you for the Moonrise Fund that we're in right now, uh, we have access to an advising list. So folks that have been in the studio, uh, the industry for a lot longer than us that we can kind of talk to about the project that we're working on and get some advice. I've heard of other prototype funds that help uh, give, basically give them like a semi-producer who is there part of the studio to just help you like develop your pipeline, make sure that uh, things are going to plan. This totally can happen with some funds. There's also some funds that will give you nothing else but money. And there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you're looking for. There's yeah. tons of prototype funds that'll just say, hey, here's a chunk of change to build it. Uh, good luck. And then email us when it's done. <laughs> That'd be cool. Um, and that is, that's totally fine in itself too. It all depends on what you're looking for. But there are prototype funds that exist that provide a lot more than just the capital. I have no additional comments, but I do have additional concerns. <laughs> oh my goodness. So that was my deal. It was pretty, it was pretty fun. You warned me that this was a bad deal. And yeah, it is bad, but it ends like funny. One thing that I did want to point out is that they were really smart. And the fact that they still did ask for like the actual deal itself. Like they didn't stop the conversation. They basically said like, Hey, why don't you just send it over and we'll take a look at it. And I think that's really smart, right? Like don't ever say no to seeing what the deal could be. Cause maybe they'll surprise you in good or bad ways, but either way you you, you're in for something. What did we learn this episode? I'll start and we can take turns. We learned that Prototype deals are different than publishing deals. Prototype deals are usually for investing in how you build the concept or the game that you want to make versus publishing deals are usually the closing act of releasing or uh, finishing development or uh, distributing the game that you're working. And you usually need a prototype to get a publisher. They might come in in that alpha or beta stage. They might help you scale or they might help you distribute later down the line. It just depends on who it is that you're talking to and what it is that you're looking for so that you can find the right match for you. I want to thank you lovely people for joining us. Uh, Season two of Publish Me, Punish Me has been a blast thus far and I hope it will continue to be. You can watch every episode of Publish Me, Punish Me on YouTube and we hope that you learn something along the ride. Uh, If you have a past deal that you really want to share with us and kind of hear talked about on the show, please click the Google form that's in the link description. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you liked and enjoyed the show. And you can also continue the conversation with all of us at discord.gg backslash hateglitch. And we'll see you next time. Or will we? We've already done that joke, son. All right, fine. Do it again. I'll do a different (laughs) joke. Alana doesn't put my one-liners in these episodes. I deliver you these fire memes. You do. The memes are fire. Um. (laughs) 